What up, players? It's Warboss Tay up in this mood. Let me tell you what we're gonna do today. We're gonna be putting on some paint with corn red. Me feast on red. A little bit of, but not too much. Balthazar gold. Dawnstone. Abadabon black. And then for the axe handle there, I went with purple. So you're gonna need Sirius purple and Nagaroth knight. Also use, obviously, the transfer that comes with the Chaos uh, box kit. So for that, I use Microsol and Microset to help me with that. Thanks for watching, you guys. Hope you enjoy it. Don't forget to leave a comment down below and we'll see you in the next video. Hey everybody, so um, here's our corn berserker. I started painting up the right side just to see how bright I wanted to go with the armor. So yeah, let's get started. We're gonna start by bringing up the base coat color, corn red. And um, I wanted to paint half of the half of the model first, just to I guess start it on his boot, just to. Uh, see how bright I want it to go if I want it to go with a very vibrant red kind of akin to the old blood red or keep with this darker darker red color and I think after trying it I, I kind of like the brighter red color it doesn't look as dull and faded now I know a lot of people out there have the darker colored Um, paint jobs in their corn berserkers. In fact, if you even look at the Games Workshop website for their product page for their corn berserkers, it looks like they went to town with the newly released washes. It basically looks like they took the old red gore color, which is now pretty close to corn red, and they base coated their models, painted all the details, and in just all the basic base coat foundation colors, and then to slap like four coats of Devlin mud onto it, onto all the models. Like the, the shadows are so pronounced and dark and there's no highlighting whatsoever. It's really interesting. Go check out the Games Workshop Corn Berserker page. I was thinking that they would re, uh, reshoot those pictures because especially when they released the, the um, codex for the Chaos Space Marines, just because they're so, those pictures are so old, I, I think they even still have the, what we used to call the broccoli bases, where they would paint the rims of the bases in green instead of brown. They just look really uh, quite cartoony compared to the newer stuff. Yeah, when I was first in the hobby, all the bases and all the white dwarves were painted in this really bright color called Goblin Green. Oh, for those of you who remember that. I think like all of my orcs and goblins were, like I wanted to try and copy Games Workshop at the time, so they were all painted in that color and it just looks so, <laughs> it looks so bad when I go back now and I think about them. Um, but, what are they talking about? Yeah, I think it was at the time when they released the washes because the old washes for the range, because there's, like I said, no highlighting. It looks like they were painted in their base colors and then the painter just decided, hey, you know, let's really show off how, how good these new washes are, that you could paint them onto your base coats and you don't even need to highlight them. But now, after, you know, so many years and so many new painters joining the hobby and how their, you know, just their image has really been picked up over the years. They've done such great work with their, with their website in making it, you know, able to take orders now and like their website looks so good and clean and with all the new models and everything coming out. We just think that they would update their corn berserkers, which is one of the 
most popular units, I think. I would say, yeah, the Corn Berserker unit is, for anyone who plays Chaos, you either have a bunch of them in your army, or you, you, um, have them, like, in a box somewhere, just waiting to be painted up. Very iconic unit of Warhammer 40,000. Okay, so the light is making this corn red look very bright, like the fist on red, but it is corn red that we're still working with. So you see now that the shade, the Agrax Earth shade, has dried. How awesome it makes the shadows look between the the brass and the red armor plates. For those of you who don't know, the World Eater's original color scheme was not red at all. It's actually white and blue armor. white armor with blue accents. So, very interesting. That when they were first founded, not until after the, the uh, Horus Heresy did the armor turn red. Many say that it was just because they've had so much blood spilled on them. Uh, that's a that's a rumor, I think. I don't think that's been confirmed. Kind of like the Night Lord's lightning bolts on their armor. I don't know if it's actually been confirmed by Games Workshop or Black Library that the lightning bolts on a Night Lord's armor are just decoration, or if they're actually bolts of lightning. Does anybody know for sure? Was it actually stated in one of the books? Aaron Dembski Bowden. I know you're a big fan of mine. <laughs> yeah, right. My lady boss is making us hot chocolate because we're gonna watch a movie next. Alright, so there, there you go. I know they're wearing gloves, but I, I think you paint the leather on the glove red, just like the rest of the figure. Um, you could also paint it black, like it's black leather, but I've, I've left it red because I think it's, um, <clears throat> it matches, and the black as, as an accent color to pop out from the, the all this red is actually, uh, the focus is, it goes more to it if you leave it on their weapons, the bolt pistol and the chain axe. So we're gonna just bring that color up with some corn red. I'm gonna let this dry and we'll finish this up when I get back. Thanks for watching everybody. Okay, so continuing on with our corn berserker, you see that the uh, corn red, I was about to say scab red, has dried and left us this really nice dark red color. So if you want, you can really just, if you want, you can end right here with this corn red and be um, pretty, you know, pleased with what you've done. But I thought I'd kick it up a step further, like I said, and start playing with some Fiston red. <clears throat> So, Mephiston Red is one of those colors, like Blood Red in the previous color range where you're going to really want to thin it down with some water onto a wet palette 
so that you do not um, end up getting really thick, clumpy paint going on your models. And test it out. Yeah, so you see how that really shows up as a really bright red. Like I said, this might not be for you. If it's not for you, then end the reds on corn, corn red, and can kick on to the next step where we highlight the gold. But for me, that colorful, almost like candy red is such a an awesome color to go with. You don't want to cover completely the previous step that you did, but you do want to make it pop. All these different red armor plates will pop with just a little bit of Mephiston red on the upper areas, kind of like where the light hits it. Beautiful that looks on the glove right there. That extra layer of the brighter red really lets you see how you know the colors transition from darker to lighter. I'm reading uh, Hammer and Bolter, Volume 2, and it's a compilation, compilation of short stories by Black Library authors, and one of them, in one of them, there is a story of a bunch of space marines being, uh, of the Blood, Blood Terrors chapter of, you know, their successor, successor chapter of the Blood Angels and they have a very recognizable color scheme of dark red, like corn red with black and in the story they're fighting against corn space marines, raptors and berserkers on this on this old forge world or, or some kind of world and uh, the, the author a couple of times describes the the blood or flesh terrors armor as being very dark dark red and then when it talks about the corn I, I assume they're world eaters but they're they're corn definitely corn worshippers because the author takes a couple of opportunities to mention that their armor is the bright red of arterial blood, blood that shoots right out of the arteries and is bright and very rich in color. So I thought that I would kind of follow that example in painting up this World Eater space. Uh, Chaos Space Marine Berserker.
Okay, so when, whenever you're painting a featureless shoulder pad, like this one, you always want to make sure that you start at kind of the most reflective point, use thin down paint, either water or paint thinner, and then just pull the edges out and around so that you don't immediately flood all the shadowy areas, but you get nice smooth coverage. If you're not particularly good at brush control, if you have shaky hands, this is going to be a technique that you can practice and will benefit you very much in the long run. A couple of thin coats of that and your shoulder pads should look great. A lot of mistakes that new people make or one of the biggest mistakes when they're painting Space Marine shoulder pads or armor plates, anything that's a color, is sometimes they'll paint straight from the pot. And when they do that, they don't water down or thin down their paint. It goes on really thick and clumpy and then it immediately dries and leaves a paint streak that is very, very difficult to, to fix later on. So by doing this, you make sure that the paint spreads evenly, covers really nicely, there's no trails, paint trails to mess you up. It's really, really easy to do. And there is your Corn Chaos World Eater Space Marine. The great thing about the Balthazar Gold is it makes a perfect, perfect brass color. So I'm not going to go over the entire marine again with this gold color, but I am going to uh, touch up some places that need a little bit of a touch up. And really you don't have to do much more. If you want, you can use a silver color, such as Rune Fang Steel, Iron Breaker. You can use that to create like a reflective surface on your on your brass, but once you wash this, once you've washed your brass with Balthazar, or with Agrax Earthshade, it creates this very dirty, dark, aged look to it, which I think I think is really good. So there is the armor. I'm going to uh, use Abaddon Black now to paint in some tubes on this guy's backpack. And then I'm going to go and see, you know, do some research and see what color these guys' islands are supposed to be. Because I just realized I'm going to paint that next and I have no idea. It's always good to start off with either black for the lining for the islands or a newer technique that I've been seeing now, especially on White Dwarf and in all the how to paint guides, is the painters have been using white, ceramite white, and what they do is uh, glaze it with the, with the glaze color. So if they want a green islands, they'll Raise it with Way Watcher Green, something like that. It's very odd to me. I don't really, I don't really care for it. But I think that's because I've always, I've always grown up, I've always painted with the uh, kind of expectation that you paint by layering of colors, and so the. The simple glaze on a on the, the simple glaze over white has always kind of struck me as a little bit too too odd.
Hey gang, so as you can see I've already started uh, putting the transfer on. <clears throat> I found out that there's no colored eye lens for my Berserker here, so I just went straight to applying the transfer. I started recording it, ran out of space, had to go back and delete some, some clips, but I'm using Microsol and Microset by the Microscale Industries range. So I took some Microset first and I took an old brush and I dabbed it all over the shoulder pad. Then I took my tweezers for taking splinters out and I um, took the transfer that I cut out from the transfer sheet, I put it into some water to make it nice and soft and then I applied it and that's about where we ran out of time. So it's just kind of been sitting here and I'm going to take the micro saw which sets the decals into place and kind of kind of melts them into place, especially over curved surfaces such as this one. I'm just going to take the micro saw and I'm going to paint it around the sides of the transfer there. Kind of seals it in place. As soon as it kind of gets folded down to where you want it to be, then, oh, and you can kind of let it dry and go away. And what we'll do is we'll come back and we'll clean up the edges as the last part of our video. Personally, I don't really care for the um, I don't really care for the design of it. I think it looks kind of cartoony and silly and um, just straight out of the early 90s, but oh well, what are you going to do, right? Alright, we're going to let that, let that set and then we'll come back and we'll finish up doing some fine details on this guy. Stay tuned! So here's our guy after the micro saw, the micro set has dried. What we're going to do is just paint down the edges, the shiny edges of the transfer. So we're going to use Mephiston Red and we are just going to thin it down a little bit. And then go to work on getting this reflective shine doubled down. If you really want to get fancy, you can go in and try to paint highlights on or try to otherwise take the shine off of the transfer itself. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to kind of leave it and yeah, like I said, work, away, work my way around it. The very last thing we're going to paint <coughs> is we're going to do Dawnstone onto all of the black casing detail. Now this is something that a lot of people, myself included, don't always do. I've been guilty of skipping this step before, but let me tell you, when you actually take the time to do it, especially when you have such a one or predominantly strong color palette as this one is, the red, then it helps to make the black casing of the weapons stick out just a little bit. So what I've done is I put the paint just on the edge, the tip of my brush, and I'm just lightly, lightly putting it, uh, brushing it along, a very fine highlight. You don't want to glob the paint on. You don't want to see an obvious line of paint on the on the black button. Just a little bit of it is really nice. So there you have it. You got something like that. Okay, the uh, 
axe handle. That's something we didn't do last time. So what I've done for the axe handle, or what I think I want to do is, see if I can find it without shutting off the camera. Uh, looks like I'm going to have to. I decided to go with a nice deep purple. So, you might say purple, that doesn't make any sense. Shouldn't the leather handle be some other color? Like red or brown? And any other color on the handle would kind of fade into the all, um, the, the, the red kind of color scheme. So, we're gonna go with Nagaroth Knight. And you see, for the Blood Angels, they do this with their uh, purity seals for their wax. Because mostly purity seals are done in um, red, red wax. But because the Blood Angels are all in red anyways, it doesn't show up as well. So if I went with a brown, like a Mornfang brown, to do like a like a reddish kind of leather it might show up but it might also look too close to the regular to the red of the armor because the red is just so striking on this corn berserker so I decided to go with purple and uh, it looks okay right now we're gonna let it dry for just a second but waiting in the wings we've got serious purple to give it a highlight so let me see if I can where did my serious purple go I just had it out <clears throat> Igor. Yes, master. Find me my, my serious purple. Here you are, master. Igor, what are you doing? You should be on camera duty. I'm playing Grand Theft Auto 5. Don't do that. Video games are gonna rot your brain. As you can see, just a fine bit of highlighting really pops that purple color out. And we are just about done. There is your corn berserker. So thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you got something out of it. And we'll see you in the next tutorial. Laters, players.